Mr. Thomas, did you do the seven? Mr. Thomas, why did you do it? Do you have anything to say? Is there a reason you did this? Do you feel bad at all? Do you care? Do you care at all? Do you care at all? You care at all? Random Radio Weekend News Make sure that you guys check out all of our other YouTube content Make sure that you guys check out the Random Radio video show Check out the Random Radio podcast show Check out the Random Radio special reports And check out the Random Radio reaction episodes To Maury and Steve Wilkos All up at YouTube right now Make sure you guys subscribe to us at YouTube Make sure that you follow us on Facebook Follow us at Twitter So that you don't miss a thing uh, This is the weekend news This is where I tell you the news stories That happened over the weekend That you probably missed Because you were probably getting ready for your New Year's Eve plans you, You're going to bring in the new year In some spectacular way I was at home Making sure that I had the news ready for you to tell you things this Monday morning that you may not have caught over the weekend, but that's okay. I got you. Let's start off here. How about that? Would you like to start off here? Let's go international. How about that? Philippines President Duarte has banned two U.S. senators over a Congress ban. Check this out. The Philippine government on the offensive against American lawmakers in what has escalated into a tit-for-tat diplomatic ban. Philippine presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo says President Rodrigo Duterte has ordered the Immigration Bureau to deny entry to the Philippines effective immediately U.S. Senators Dick Durbin and Patrick Leahy. The two senators sought to ban U.S. entry for Filipino officials involved in what they called the wrongful detention of Philippine Senator Laila de Lima, a staunch critic of the Duterte administration. The two American senators helped introduce a provision in America's 2020 budget banning the entry of those involved in de Lima's arrest and detention. The provision is in accordance with the Global Magnitsky Human Rights Accountability Act, a U.S. law authorizing Washington to sanction those it deems as human rights offenders, freezing their assets and banning them from entering the country. Yes. According to UPI.com, the government of the Philippines is barring the entry of two U.S. senators and may soon require that all Amer- American visitors obtain visas, a spokesman from, Pre- from President Duarte said Friday. Spokesman Salvador Pinello uh, told reporters that Senator Patrick Leahy of Vermont and Dick Durbin of Illinois are prohibited from entering the Philippines as a response to the U.S. Congress passing this month's Uh, passing this month a large budget bill. A provision in the bill prohibits U.S. entry for persons involved in the jailing of Philippine Senator Leila de Lima, a prominent critic of Duarte's war on drugs. Mm -hmm. The Democratic senators introduced the amendment to the $1.4 trillion budget bill, which was signed by uh, President Donald Trump last week. Philippines is immediately ordering the Bureau of Immigration to deny Leahy and Durbin the imperious, uninformed, and gullible American legislators who introduced the subject provision, Pinello said. DeLima has been in jail since 2017 on drug charges. She and other critics, including Leahy and Durbin, argue her arrest was politically motivated and done to please Duarte. Uh, the government in Manila is also considering a change that will require short-term American visitors to obtain a visa. If the United States follows through on the Leahy-Durbin Amendment, current uh, American travelers who spend 30 or fewer days in the Philippines don't need the legal documentation. This is very interesting, uh, this whole thing with Ms. DeLima. Uh, she's in jail currently on drug charges. President Duarte is very strong, uh, stringent and strong on drug charges. He does not allow any of that however i heard that she is a political prisoner i have to look into this into her story more i did not 
I uh, know that this is part of our budget bill that we got passed. I don't know why this would be in our budget bill, but it was. Either way, and so Dick Durbin and Leahy introduced it, and so now President Duarte has said, "Uh uh-uh, you can't come over here anymore. I think it's very interesting that, you know, he he's you know, he is the president of his own nation. He can do what he wants, and if he doesn't want those two guys coming over, then they can't come over. Uh, president I mean Duarte I mean uh, Leahy and Durbin uh, didn't really care. Uh, their reaction was pretty much limited and basically who cares pretty much. Vermont Senator Patrick Lay released a statement Saturday denouncing the government of the Philippines for its ongoing imprisonment of a government official and its crackdown against a prominent journalist. The standoff comes after the country's Bureau of Immigration moved to deny Lay and his Senate colleague Dick Durbin the ability to visit the county, in addition to threatening restrictions on visa-free travel by U.S. passport holders. Those measures were in turn taken in response to sanctions that the U.S. Congress recently passed imposing travel restrictions on individuals involved in the detention of the government official, Senator Layla Day Lima. Rather than responding by irrationally threatening to deny visas to American citizens, the Duterte government should either release Senator Day Lima immediately or provide her the fair, public trial she is entitled to, Lay said in a press release. And rather than try to silence a journalist who has bravely dared to expose official corruption and abuse, it should recognize her as a courageous Filipino exercising her right of free expression. Day Lima is an outspoken critic of the administration of President Rodrigo Duterte and oversaw an inquiry into the government's mass killings of drug suspects. She was arrested in 2017 on drug trafficking-related charges which the human rights group Amnesty International has called politically motivated. So they don't care about this and it means nothing to them. So they're not concerned. But what does this mean for the other Americans who go over? Filipino Americans who go and visit their family. What does this mean for them? What what kind of issues will this bring upon the Filipino Americans, the small demographic that they are here in America, yet they are a demographic here in America? What, what will happen with them? So something to think about. We'll check back on that in the future and see what happens. Radio icon Don Imus died. Check this out. Radio had no idea what hit it when Don Imus debuted on New York's WNBC in 1971. Imus was ruthlessly funny, disdained conformity, and reveled in ridiculing the powerful and famous. Well, what, what, I mean, what? His radio show gained a national audience and greater influence when it was simulcast on MSNBC. No one and no subject was off limits. <laughs> Boy, you can't get anything by him, can you? <laughs> no, we don't care. I, I absolutely don't care. Yeah. Friday, Don Imus died. Uh, he's one of the biggest names in news, and he was one of the biggest names on the radio for a long, 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 long time. Uh, Imus' career spanned decades, lasting until his retirement in March 2018. His outspoken rhetoric concerning politics and pop culture ended, hit, earned him the I-Man endearment among his fans and helped shape modern morning television and radio into what it is today. In 2007, Imus caused public outrage when he made derogatory remarks about Rutgers women's basketball team, calling them nappy-headed hoes. <laughs> girls from Rutgers, man. They got tattoos and some hardcore hoes. That's a, that's a nappy-headed hose there. I'm going to tell you that now. Oh, 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 man. man, that's some... Ooh. And uh, <clears throat> the girls from Tennessee, they all look cute, you know, so... Like, kind of like a... I don't know. Spike Lee thing. Yeah. yeah. yeah Jingle Boos versus the Wannabes. Yeah. That a, movie that he had. Yeah, it was a tough... Uh, do the right thing. I don't yeah, know yeah, if yeah. I'd have wanted to beat Rutgers or not, but they did, right? Yes, that was hilarious. He called them nappy-headed hoes because Spike Lee said it in the boot in the in the, in the uh, what's the movie? Do what was it? Was the School Days movie? There was a Jigaboos and the Wannabes, and that is why he basically made, made a comment in reference to that. It was, then he got kicked off the radio for that and oh they were so mad and Oprah and Russell Simmons and Common and all these other people came out and said it's time for him to be done and so that was the end of that and so then he went to the internet radio and things still were great but either way uh and many people had various things to say about his death uh Joe Scarborough from MSNBC said he spent much of his childhood listening to Don Imus 
Uh, and he was hooked on him, and he knew him as a radio legend and a nice southern guy. Uh, there were others who had various kind things to say about John Imus. Um, then there were some of the, of course, sad people who were mad, the, the, the blacks who were, uh, of course, very upset, like this Yisha Callahan, whoever the hell she is. I'll never forget Diamonds, Don Imus called the Rutgers women's basketball team nappy headed hoes and jigaboos by. Well, he didn't call them jigaboos, he called them nappy headed hoes. He did call them that. The jigaboos was in reference to the, the movie School Days, where Spike Lee said jigaboos in. Anyway, so someone else said Don Imus was a racist, sexist, and clown and was awful seeing notable white dudes in media go out of their way to say yes, but so important to radio when I know your asses won't give a shit when the next woman of color... Oh, God. Who, who, fuck that. Anyway, so he's gone. Uh, it's unfortunate. He was a great legend in radio. He's gone. I thought he was always funny. He was refreshing. He's like, Howard Stern is refreshing. Uh, so Lorenzo Tomas is refreshing. So it's it's sad to see him go, but I like Don. It was great. Uh, there was a stabbing at a synagogue. Yes. No. 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 There was a stabbing. Wait a minute. There was a stabbing at a um at a rabbi's house. Check this out. Dozens of people were celebrating Hanukkah in this house, the home of a rabbi adjacent to a synagogue, when an attacker stormed in. The man pulled out a machete and stabbed five people, running after his victims who tried to flee. One victim was stabbed at least six times. The killer then fled the site. Police say a suspect has been arrested. Although the motives behind the attack are still being investigated, New York's governor has ordered the state police hate crimes task force to take on the case. Anti-Semitic assaults have multiplied in recent weeks in New York and surrounding areas. On December 10, four people were killed in an attack on a kosher supermarket in New Jersey. Orthodox Jews have been a primary target. Oh, wow. Yes, over the weekend, apparently, there was a stabbing and celebration of Hanukkah at a rabbi's house. Now, this story right here really got under my skin for a couple of reasons. The first reason this got under my story is because this, they immediately said that this was, um, you know, a, a Jewish you know, anti-Semitism and all of that. And so that's what made me look into it because I wanted to know who was doing this anti-Semitism. And then I found out that it was a man um, that, that they wouldn't tell me the, 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 the man's race. So immediately, you know what I thought. If they're not telling me his race, he must be black. Because whenever they're white, they are quick to tell me their race because they want me to believe that white people are out here killing Jewish people, black people, and Mexican people at, at, at all times. And so as I'm reading more into this story, I'm reading about how a knife-wielding man went into a rabbi's home and stabbed five people as they celebrated Hanukkah. And he's not even from the area. His name is Grafton E. Thomas. He looks like this. Yeah. And then I realized he was black. Then I saw why I was like, clearly they don't want us to know that the, there's that clearly the a majority of these killings, mass murder, once again, a mass murder. This is five people in one place. This would be a mass murder happened at the hand of a black. They don't want to tell us about that. Just like how they don't want to tell us about test majors. They don't want to tell us about test majors murder. They don't want to tell us about when blacks did two weeks ago when they ran up in a synagogue and shot up that, that, that whole situation. But they'll tell us when whites... When whites are shooting up synagogues, I gotta know they white and I gotta know they doing it. Why can't I have the same equity in my news reporting when it comes to the blacks? Because I'm clearly seeing that the blacks I've seen, has it been two synagogues that have been shot up this year by whites and now it's two uh, uh, Jewish assaults done by blacks? Okay, so we're even, right? We're 50-50. If the whites, when they do it, it's an epidemic, then clearly when the blacks do it, it should be also be an epidemic. And black people, I would like for you to understand that, you know, Jews are liberal. They, they support a lot of the crap you all support. And what I don't understand is, is that 
I they, they haven't said it yet about this man. He was he was arraigned today, Sunday night. Uh, his bail is five million dollars, and so they they haven't said it yet whether or not he's in, he's affiliated with the um, the Hebrew Israelite group that is up there in New York. But I, I'm curious to know: Are they ever going to denounce this group? Are they ever going to call him a terrorist? I saw something earlier today trying to say that it was Trump's fault that this was happening. Yes, the man who just signed a bill in to help Jews, to keep them from being victimized. Yes, he's the reason the blacks are killing Jews. Right. So the blacks are killing Jews. Is anyone going to call the blacks out on this? Is anyone going to, are any black leaders going to come out? Is Oprah going to come out and speak about this like they did about Don Imus? Are we going to see any Don Lemons say that this is terrible? We need to stop this. Are any black leaders going to call out the black community about this and tell them we need to stand up for our Jewish brothers and stop this violence? Because clearly blacks are killing Jews just as much as whites. So if it's an epidemic when whites do it, it should be an epidemic when blacks do it. So I, I, I really need for this to stay. This is the second one in three weeks. Two Jewish killings targeting Jews in three weeks. Come on now. I'm going to need for the, the people out there to show some equity with this because this is terrible. This man is able to kill people. He's able to kill Jews. And he gets and 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 and, and the news doesn't even want to tell me that it's a black killing Jew. So Jews are walking around New York thinking that the blacks not the ones killing them it's white people but that's a lie but what should i expect right most of the media is a bunch of fucking heathens and that leads us to the heathen report so i know that the heathens did their thing this weekend because why wouldn't they right it's 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 new year's eve so maybe they'll save their heathen behavior for for december 31st i don't know we'll see what happens here check out the heathen report and at an apartment complex in DeKalb County on Gladeview Parkway, police are investigating a different shooting where they say a man was hit multiple times. Police say when they arrived at the scene, they found him in the breezeway. He was taken to the hospital. His condition is unknown at this time. Police haven't said if they have a suspect. Right now, a shooting at a barber shop on Staten Island. Police responded to the scene on Forest Avenue near Amity Place in the Graniteville section around 6 o'clock tonight. Sources say a former employee shot a man inside the Good to Go barber shop. That victim was rushed to the hospital. We're told he has non life threatening injuries. Sources say the suspect has been arrested. Four on the Sunday, Charlotte police say a 13 year old girl is dead and two other boys are hurt after a shooting in a mall parking lot. Police say it happened last night outside of Dave and Buster's at Concord Mills Mall. Right now, there are conflicting reports about how it started. Concord police do not believe the 13 year old was the intended target. The two boys were taken to the hospital, but are expected to recover. Police say they're working on a suspect description and also talking to witnesses. Investigators are also considering a possible connection to another deadly shooting earlier last night on Lincoln Street. A 31 year old was shot multiple times and died. Aurora police say they've arrested a suspect in the deadly mall shooting yesterday afternoon. 18 year old Camille Xavier Garrett is facing murder charges in the death of 17 year old Nathan Poindexter. Police say Garrett allegedly opened fire in the JC Penney at the Aurora Town Center, sending shoppers running for cover. Poindexter was found with a gunshot injury and died later at the hospital. His family identified him as the victim. Two people have been killed in a shooting in Mtlanga Rock, Sokwazulu Natal. Emergency services responded to reports of a shootout north of Durban involving two vehicles. A woman traveling in a black BMW vehicle died on the scene. The driver of that vehicle was taken to hospital where he later died. In another shooting incident on Friday, an off-duty e-hailing driver was shot outside the Westville Mall in Durban. At least two people are dead tonight after an ambush-style shooting in Texas. Houston police say a group of people were shooting a music video in a parking lot last night when gunfire broke out. All the victims are described as young Hispanic men. Seven others were wounded. Investigators say it's unclear how many shooters there were or if this was a targeted attack. No arrests have been made. 
want to begin tonight with breaking news where right now Concord police are investigating a serious shooting outside of Concord Mills Mall. Police are saying this is not an active shooter situation. Even still, there is quite a large police presence there tonight. A viewer sent us these photos and videos. Many of you can see that there are lots of police cars responding to that scene. And we're learning some new details about that tragic church shooting that occurred in Fort Worth, Texas this morning. It reportedly has left at least two people dead. Christina Coleman has been following it all as it develops. Christina. Well, Eric, we've just got an update from officials in White Settlement, Texas. At least three people were critically injured, including the shooter at West Freeway Church of Christ. Ages of victims range from 30 to 60 years old. Police received a call shortly before 10 a.m. Central Time for gunshots, specifically a person with gunshot wounds there at the church. When White Settlement police and fire arrived, they found three people in critical condition, at least three people. Our local affiliate, KDFW, reporting the shooter was engaged by an armed security officer at the church. But at this time, it's unclear whether the gunshot the shooter received was self-inflicted or if they were shot by the guard or someone else. Mm -hmm. so we had a shooting at a North Carolina mall where they take the, the life of a young girl. We had another shooting at, an, at somewhere else where another young brother passed away, a young brother, he was about 18. And to top it all off, we have the city of White Settlement. Yes, White Settlement. Well, they are having a shooting. Gunman kills one person in a Texas church, and then the one of the men in there shoots him. Um, I'm showing a bit of the back footage in the background. I don't want to show too much. I know how YouTube is, and they'll ooh, have a problem with it. But I, I am very prompt, I'm very happy that there was this man here who was able to thwart this foolish heathen over here. And he got rid of this white heathen because it was a white man. They made sure that they told me that he was a white man. So I'm so glad that, they, that, that he was able to get rid of this heathen. And, and I'm, I'm glad that he was able to take him down. This further proves that, hey, when we all have guns... We can, we can stop some of these, these killing situations. Could you imagine if no one in that place had a gun, right? Take a city like Chicago where the guns are, where they got concealed and carry, but every place has a damn sticker on it, so you really can't conceal and carry. Could you imagine if people did not have a gun in a place, in, in this place? Could you imagine how many lives that man would have been able to take? But because there was a gun, he only was able to take one life, and then his life was taken. That is fabulous and we need to look at this as an example of what we need to push for not a push against guns but a push <laughs> maybe to let everybody have guns maybe we should let everybody have guns I, I guarantee you if everybody has guns it'll make people think twice about pulling out their gun on people they'll think twice about that I guarantee you, they'll think twice about robbing people they'll think twice about all of that Yes, and for those people who are sitting up here and going to say the town is called White Settlement, yes, it is called White Settlement and it is in Texas. I know, racist. The actual town's name comes from the Native Americans who called it White Settlement because it was the only town with white people in the area. So to, to, to signify, which not to signify, to make, a, to identify what town it was, the Native Americans called it White Settlement. Before you get yourselves all in a racist tizzy and start looking for conspiracy theories with this, it's all good. So, let's make ourselves feel better. Let's get some filth cat and beautiful women. I don't know what we should capture this week. I mean, it's just so much going on. How about we take a look at women that we've seen throughout the year and we try to recap as much of it as we can. If we can't, then we'll just recap beautiful women. So you guys enjoy this. I'll see you in a moment. Random Radio.
yeah, make sure you guys check out Filth Cats Music everywhere, SoundCloud, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, make sure that you guys check out all of the uh, beautiful women that we've shown throughout the year. Check out all of my past episodes so you can see a past Filth Cat and Women's Appreciation. We call those Women's Appreciation because we do appreciate the women here at Random Radio. So make sure you guys check that out. Uh, finally, the NFL came to a close this weekend, as did Random Radio Podcast Show. I don't know if you guys know that. Random Radio Podcast Show, the show that I host. I've been hosting it for five years on this channel that showcased musical, underground musical talent. It came to a close on Sunday. We stopped. The, that was the last time we would do a Random Radio Podcast Show. Uh, the Random Radio Awards will be Tuesday. But yeah, that came to a close. But the NFL season also came to a close. And the playoffs are set. And well, here's how we're looking. So, uh, starting next week, playoffs are looking kind of like they're looking like this. The, uh, the AFC will be the New England Patriots versus the Tennessee Titans in the wild cards. The Houston Texans will play up against the Buffalo Bills in the wild card. This, this, this is all going to be great. Kansas City Chiefs and the Baltimore Ravens will have a bye in the first week, so they'll be taking the week off. And also next week, we'll be seeing the New Orleans Saints playing the Minnesota Vikings in the first round. And we'll be seeing the Philadelphia Eagles versus the Seattle Seahawks who lost to the 49ers in the late game. They'll be playing this. See, Eagles and the Seahawks will be playing again. That's always a good matchup. That's Saints and Vikings. I'm pretty sure the Saints will demolish the Vikings. And then the 49ers and the, and the Green Bay Packers have the week off. So we've got some playoffs coming up. We've got some great football action coming up. And that is going to be Fantastic. So you guys get yourselves ready for that. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Make sure you guys leave something, leave some messages, leave some messages, <laughs> leave some messages in the comment section. I'm so excited I can't speak. Yeah, Random radio. You are listening to Random Radio.